Hi, I'm Robert Rojas. In this video, I am going to share with you a simple technique in constructing a finite automaton with minimal number of states. This technique, however, is useful for constructing simple finite automata only. Other complicated finite automata require different techniques. Let's start now. Suppose you are asked to construct a deterministic finite automaton or DFA that accepts any strings of zeros and ones starting with the substring 101. First, you have to figure out what are the input symbols or the elements of the set sigma, that is, the alphabet. Then figure out what is the minimum requirement or the minimum acceptable string. Since the problem states that the automaton accepts any string of zeros and ones starting with the substring 101, then the minimum acceptable string is 101. It is because the string itself 101 starts with a substring 101 even though it is an improper substring. So let us construct this minimum requirement first. Since this minimum substring 101 contains three input symbols, then we can construct an automaton with four states only. Let us designate Q0 or Q0 as the starting state and Q3 as the final state. So now we have this simple automaton as shown in the screen. The final state is shown as a node with a double circle. The next step to do is to provide a transition path or just path for the other input alphabet or input symbol an element of sigma, which does not have any path yet from a given state. Since we are constructing a DFA, we need to provide a path for every input symbol from any given state. Let us start from Q0. There is already a path from Q0 if we encounter a 1, but there is no path if we encounter a 0. Since we are trying to form a string starting with 101, we care about a 1 to start the string 101. But if we encounter a 0 from Q0, it can never form a string starting with 101 because the first input is 0. So if a 0 is encountered from Q0, we have to introduce a new state called the did state as shown in the screen and let the automaton go to such a did state that is Q4. When it reaches the did state, it cannot get out of it for the succeeding inputs because the string can never start with the substring 101 anymore. Let us continue providing a path for input 1 from Q1. There is already a path from Q1 if we encounter a 0, but there is no path if we encounter a 1. If we are in Q1, we already encountered a 1, which might be the start of the string 101. Since we are tracking or forming the string 101, and we encountered a 1 already, we now want to encounter a 0, not a 1. But if we encounter a 1, the substring form is 1, 1, which can no longer form the string 1, 0, 1. So if we encounter a 1 from Q1, it also goes to the did state Q4 as shown in the screen. Let us continue providing a path for input 0 from Q2. There is already a path from Q2 if we encounter a 1, but there is no path if we encounter a 0. If we are in Q2, we already encountered the substring 10, which might be the substring of the string starting with 101. Since we are forming the string 101 and we already encountered the substring 10, we now want to encounter a 1, not a 0. But if we encounter a 0, then the substring so far is 100, which cannot form the string starting with 101. So if we encounter a 0 from Q2, it also goes to the did state that is Q4 as shown on the screen. Let us continue providing a path for input 0 and a path for input 1 from Q3. It is because for a DFA, we have to provide a path for every input symbol encountered from a given state. We have to remember that if Q3 has been reached, the last input symbol encountered was a 1, and the string encountered so far starts with the substring 101, which is what we are forming or tracking. But the string 101 encountered so far may be just a substring of a bigger string starting with 101. So we have to continue scanning the remaining input symbols until all input symbols of a given input string are consumed. After the entire input string has been scanned, that is the time we have to stop scanning. Then the automaton determines whether the input string is valid or not. If the last state is one of the elements of the set of final states, then the input string is valid or acceptable or part of the language. Otherwise, the input string is invalid or unacceptable or not part of the language. Let us continue providing a path for input 0 from Q3. 
we have to remember that when we are in Q3, we have already encountered 101. And it already satisfies the requirement because the substring encountered so far starts with 101. But if we are at Q3 and we still encounter a 0, we have to remember that the string form so far already starts with 101. So regardless of the number of succeeding zeros encountered from Q3, the string remains to be acceptable. So when we are in Q3 and we encounter a 0, it loops back to the same state that is Q3 as shown in the screen. What about encountering a 1 from Q3? We have to remember that when we are in Q3, we already encountered the substring 101. And the requirement is already satisfied because the substring already starts with 101. So if we are in Q3 and we still encounter a 1, the string form remains valid. So it loops back to the same state, that is Q3. In this case, since both inputs 0 and 1 loop back to Q3, we can just have one loop, but the labels are comma separated as shown in the screen. As for the did state Q4, we still need to provide a path for 0 and a path for 1. It is because we are constructing a deterministic finite state automaton. Any succeeding inputs of zeros and 1s will always loop back to the did state because the string form can never form a string starting with 101. So the final diff A that accepts any string of zeros and 1s starting with 101 looks like the one shown in the screen. So we are done now. As can be observed, every node or state has a path to another state or possibly loop back to the same state for every possible input symbol that will be encountered. Since we plotted the minimum string requirement at the start of the construction, then a if A with a minimal number of states is generated. Try changing any of the paths constructed and you will definitely end up having some invalid strings as acceptable and some valid strings as unacceptable. So there you are. Thank you very much. I hope this lecture notes in video form has helped you in some way in understanding abstract machines in your computer science journey. Bye!